running the Bitcoin business. But first we want to thank um, to Clayton and um, Big Bricks for uh, letting us have our event here in this really awesome space. We want to thank Tina Bitcoin for the pieces. Um, so excuse me, we've got a lot of stuff to go through today. <coughs> So, um, reminder, we're a volunteer-run meetup, so uh, Brooke, Mark, and myself run this just in our spare time, so we're always happy to accept donations. We have a QR code over at that table over there if you want to give us some, send us some Bitcoin, or uh, we can, we accept a uh, fiat as well. So, if we have time today, if time permits, after Gil's talk, we might have a bit of a Which discussion. Which will be brief, so don't, <laughs> don't worry. There's going to be let's play and other time to discuss other things. Okay. Which if, are more important. Uh, okay. But um, if we if we have time after the talk, we might have a bit of a discussion about current events in Bitcoin and all the uh, drama with unlimited and segwit and all that good stuff. Um, so we also we usually do lightning talks before um, every presentation. So we might, that's, you know, lightning talks are just, you know, an opportunity for any of you to come up here for, you know, just two, three minutes and tell us, you know, what you're working on, tell us about your ideas, ask for help, look for partners, etc. So do we have any takers today if you want to come up and tell us what they're working on? All right. All right, come on up. What's so, your name? Pat. Pat. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually not, in the blockchain space, but in the Ethereum space. So I'll probably do a, in one of the Ethereum meetups, or one of them will be demoing kind of a, a project app that I've been doing, but essentially it's like a Kickstarter where you post your project to the blockchain. It's validated that you're the ownership, you maintain ownership of that idea, and then the contributors of the fund to the idea are like all safe and locked on the blockchain. And if your idea never gets funded, all the contributors get a kickback. So that's kind of like just a, a blockchain project that I'm working on, but yeah. So I'm really interested to see how like the business of blockchain stuff can actually be applied. Because right now I feel like it's a lot of, a lot of pet, pet projects. So yeah. Well, you're going to be disappointed because I'm going to be talking about Bitcoin. That's right. <laughs> as long as it's blockchain, I don't care. So that's cool. That's right. We are yeah, the that's... Bitcoin and open blockchain. Open, open blockchain. Open yeah. blockchain. Yeah. So as long yes. as it's blockchain. So, All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other takers? Do you want to come up here and tell us what they're working on? Um, well, this is just since that came up, I run the Ethereum meetup group, so if anyone has questions about Ethereum or wants to present, uh, talk to me. And awesome. I'll set it up. <laughs> cool. Anyone else? No, I have one question for the group. If there's anyone here that understands SQL databases and has a really solid understanding of blockchains and wants to explain both of those to a room full of people, we're looking for someone to do that, so please come talk to me if that's you. And I think that covers the housekeeping. So Gil today is going to be talking to us about, I think the title you wanted was The War on Cash and Other Tales from the Front Line of Operating a Bitcoin Business, which is an awesome title, but it didn't fit into the, the meetup.com <laughs> title. <laughs> right. So. Well, I wrote it on my phone and sent it off to Mark Howard because he wanted a brief descriptor, and I was... Uh, Maybe two beers deep and <laughs> was feeling creative. So it's an awesome title, but it didn't fit. Right. So Gil is a Chicago native, and he was an options trader for what 20 years. A yes. member of the CBOE and the CME, and got involved in Bitcoin in 2013. And in 2014, you and um, some co-founders started Athena Bitcoin, and they run primarily uh, Bitcoin ATMs, right, in Chicago and around the country as well. Right. Yeah, we're in uh, seven different states and 12 different metro areas, yes. Awesome. seven different states, cool. And you're also involved in providing infrastructure for easy access to points for other companies as well, right? Uh, well, no, to uh, actual consumers. Actual consumers, cool. Yeah. All right, and you do, can, Gil does can primarily compliance and customer service at the end of it, right? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, among... Among all kinds of other things. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Excellent. Well, please welcome Gil. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to be here because about three years ago, I am standing in the same spot where I was, I'm not going to say honored, but 
extremely pleased to introduce Andreas Antonopoulos, who came out here on a minus 10 February evening, <laughs> and we had 100 people in here. That was in February 2014, and about two days later, I met Brooke and Bill, who had hosted Andreas in a in their home, and they invited us into their home, and I remember eating a lot of pizza at their home, <laughs> drinking a lot of beer at their home, and it was much like a fireside chat. There was, I'm going to say about 50 of us uh, Bitcoin enthusiasts. I think that night that you hosted all of us, it was sub-zero also. Um, yep. And the talk that Andreas gave here in front of 100 plus people in, in here is uh, decidedly more enlightening than the um, brief talk I'm going to give you here. But I feel really um, excited and honored to be standing in the same space three years later. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, basically the same price, but it was on its way to because it was the time of the uh, transactional malleability and it was the um, fraud at Mt. Gox. Um, thankfully, I didn't have any of my Bitcoin on Mt. Gox, but it was drama on the high seas and it almost echoes what's going on now with um, the hard fork. So I'm going to make my talk as brief as possible. Um, I, I tend to ramble on, so please, if, if I do, uh, Brooke, you can cut me off. <laughs> um, and that being said, there was one other thing I wanted to say, but I forgot what it was, so I'll just go uh, on to my presentation. I am one of the founders of Athena Bitcoin that was founded in 2015. I've been involved in, uh, I've been an investor in Bitcoin since 2013, got super interested in it in late 2013, and certainly after that I met Brooke and Bill, um, got to meet Andreas on several occasions. Oh, this is what I wanted to say, I, that the Bob meetup is my absolute favorite meetup, it's the only one that I go to, and Yay. Um, <laughs> I love Anna and Brooke and Mark. And when I came back from the Miami Bitcoin conference in January, um, we had a Bob meetup at Peace Pizza, and I was fresh off the plane. I was telling Mark some of the experiences that I've had in talking to boots on the ground customers of Bitcoin. And he said, well, that would be a fantastic uh, you know, meet up and you can talk about that stuff, would you do it? And I said, uh, maybe. So, but here I am. And uh, so I'll go uh, with my presentation. Um, Bill is helping me with it. So I started here with, and this is not a presentation on what Bitcoin is, it's just a, a few snippets from the uh, tales from the front, but this is, how I explain to newbies what Bitcoin is. And I'm gonna say 80% of the people are, are, are smart enough, like they get it. And, it. and it spurs better discussion because the thing about Bitcoin is it's technical and technical scares a ton of people, right? But if you start with something that they can understand, it, it drives pretty decent discussion, especially with people that are just getting into Bitcoin, using it for the first time. And uh, while I cannot transmit this to my customers, because they're calling me on the phone and saying, or they're emailing me <clears throat> and saying, oh my god, where's my Bitcoin? Like, they're freaking out. You know, where's my money? Um, but uh, we'll get to more of that later. So this is how I start. And so then let's move to the next slide. 
a uh, little bit about Athena Bitcoin Inc., of which I'm one of four partners. We were founded in 2015. Myself and my three partners are all ex-derivatives traders, options traders here in Chicago. Right now, Athena Bitcoin Inc. runs a network of 32 Bitcoin ATMs in 12 metro areas in seven states. Um, we acquired Bitquick.co, which is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange, um, which has uh, a lot of other people that are trying to acquire Bitcoin. Um, same thing. They don't want to wait. They don't want to wait four days for their Bitcoin. They want to get their Bitcoin, right? Um, we have a wallet available on the app stores running on Airbits technology. If you go onto the app stores and you put Athena Bitcoin wallet, you can find our wallet, which like I said, is run on Airbits technology. It's mobile only. We um, uh, love Airbits technology. And we're very good at explaining to our customers how to use the Airbits wallet. Um, Athena Bitcoin Inc. is always interested in projects and businesses in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So if you um, ever want to hit me up, have a conversation, hit me up on LinkedIn. My name is Gilbert Valentine. I don't have it on this presentation. Next slide. Oh, we're at AthenaBitcoin.com. Um, these are our support vectors. Uh, our customers can email us at support. We have a phone number, which we man from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Right now, I'm building the customer service platform, so we're probably gonna branch into the weekends. Uh, we're one of the only Bitcoin ATM companies that has a US-based customer service line that is live. So, me and my team have a lot of interaction with newbies, and people on the ground that are buying Bitcoin, losing their Bitcoin, or thought they lost their Bitcoin. It's been especially challenging in the last three months with uh, a lot of transactions hung up in the memory pool. They are calling constantly. Uh, next. Um, fraud detection. We've done, um, I'm pretty proud of what we've done in the last couple months. We implemented a system by which we netted uh, new people new to Bitcoin that were trying to buy Bitcoin through our ATM network, and they were going to basically send it to St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, we have a system in place by which we freeze transactions for first-time buyers. We then call them, interview them by phone. We talk to them on email. Not talk to them, we write back and forth on email. In the last uh, six weeks, um, I'm able to return $30,000 worth of funds to people who otherwise would have been completely screwed. Hmm. Um, so the scams that we see are, as I say, the old, old as the hills and include scams that were perpetrated using MoneyGram and Western Union. These scams are 20 years old, um, but now uh, the scammers use Bitcoin. Um, I've read through uh, hundreds of pages of email of their correspondence with the scammers, and I can tell you that the scammers uh, try and, uh, and, and they're very good at it. They, they, they pose themselves as female, commissioned officers of the military who absolutely have to sell a $2,500 Porsche, or a Porsche for $2,500 because they need to get some money, you know, fast. Um, the scams include, um, and I will have this presentation uh, on the web in some uh, form where you can see, but I have links. I wrote an article on the used car scam. Uh, Brian Krebs wrote a very interesting article on the Money Mule Gang scam. We've encountered that uh, a handful of times. We see elderly fraud. I'm not sure if that's uh, spelled correctly, but my dad can tell me. Uh, IRS payment fraud and man in the middle attacks. So moving away from the um, not so sunshiny uh, side of what I see. What I am also seeing 
is the growth of big Bitcoin users. Um, we are seeing new people every day, um, dozens. It's estimated, I read a couple articles, right? That there's been 100% growth of users per year since 2012. Global estimates uh, is in the millions of Bitcoin users. I, you know, this is very debatable. I'm, I'm of the opinion that there's about 4 million users globally. But I might be way off base. Um, access to Bitcoin is becoming easier with the growth of the Bitcoin ATM network. Um, I, on this uh, picture, I did not put um, the growth of uh, ATMs, which is on, I think, the next slide. But you can see here, one of the uh, platforms which, uh, which we at BitQuick uh, compete against is local Bitcoins. And the growth of the volume on local Bitcoins is obviously a hockey stick right now. So, um, here are the Bitcoin ATMs in the United States. Uh, there's 685 here in the United States right now. I pulled this off today. Um, you can see there's 80 here in the Chicago metro area, et cetera, et cetera. We're down in Georgia, we're down in Florida, we're down in Dallas. We only have two uh, machines here in Illinois. Um, uh, New York is, uh, is covered, but there's over 200 um, in the New York uh, metro area. Um, when I first started in this business, in the United States there was 198. And that was in late 2015. Um, or actually late 2014. Um, and globally, there's 1,050. You can see the United States is by far the leader. And there's, on average, uh, an installation of 1.5 Bitcoin ATMs per day globally. Next slide. <laughs> um, in case you think it's really easy, right? Um, it's a very interesting business. It, uh, it generates a lot of revenue. Um, Season uh, MSBs being money services businesses, money transmitters, and we've had interaction with uh, guys that own networks of several thousand ATMs, regular way ATMs that cannot bank uh, Bitcoin businesses. Um, find, like I say, finding a bank uh, that will big, bank your Bitcoin business, and if you have in your title, like we do, Athena Bitcoin Inc., um, very often they send you packing. Once I, I'm the lead compliance officer. Once I get to a compliance officer at a bank, somebody who's um, directly responsible, they call it the BSA officer, like I'm shown the door. Um, oh, and if you think about uh, having a Bitcoin business that you know will accept credit cards, um, credit card companies hate Bitcoin. So don't even think about selling Bitcoin via a credit card. So here's your typical user. Um, us here uh, in Chicago at the meetups, you know, I meet a lot of this guy, right? Um, people think that it is uh, nerd currency uh, and a white guy's currency and a guy's currency. Um, I looked on Coins.Dance today. It said that 98.5% of the users are male. I'll tell you, I, my experience is not. Um, so, to the next slide. Greater than 20% are female. Greater than 50% are not Caucasian. Greater than 50% of the customer base are underbanked or unbanked. Um, so imagine somebody that needs to do something with money, but they can't do it through a traditional banking system. That is, um, that's a lot of our users. 
They're privacy minded. They don't trust the government. They don't trust banks because they're underbanked or unbanked, right? But when I tell them that I have uh, know your customer obligations with FinCEN, um, which I do, um, and I tell them I need your ID um, or else I'm not going to sell you Bitcoin, I can count on one hand the number of times that a person has said no. Bitcoin is a problem sol solver's currency. It is a very inelegant way to buy a cup of coffee. But what I find is the use cases, and I'm not going to get into the um, use cases that might be borderline legal, but I'm going to talk to you about the people that I, I personally interviewed and my staff has interviewed. Um, these people are interested in cross-border remittance. They're, in the last three months, I have talked to eight females who are first-time Bitcoin buyers, and I interviewed them and said, "Well, are you buying a are you buying a car? You know, I'm trying to see if they're going to get scammed." They say, "No, I'm traveling internationally, and I'm buying Bitcoin because when I hop the border into Europe or whatever." I can take my Bitcoin and I can take it to a Bitcoin ATM and I can get euros for my dollars, you know, that I that I deposited to buy Bitcoin, and I don't have to pay the juice on the way in and the way out of the airport, um, which I found very interesting in the last couple months. Um, payment of goods being bought from international vendors, which is the story that. Uh, uh, Mark Howard um, was initially intrigued and wanted me to give this talk about. And on future slides, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, payment for goods being bought domestically <coughs> by, the, I've had three guys buying car kits. Like they're buying bumper stuff for their um, cars. Um, investment, we have a lot of people that say, I've heard about it. I want in, and so I'm buying. And then uh, online purchases, which we can talk about. Which merchants online accept Bitcoin um, until you know the day? Uh, well, it, the day's already over. But so uh, those are the ones that I that I uh, that I see uh, a lot, right? Um, gotta have hair. This is this is what Mark Howard wanted me to tell you about. Was one of our first customers was a uh, young man named Trayvon, who would buy about a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin three times a week, right? And he's paying ten percent over what the spot rate is because that's what our ATMs charge. We got to talking to him. Trayvon, what are you doing? Why, did, why are you buying all this Bitcoin? He says, well, my mother makes uh, wigs. And I buy hair from India and China. And I have to go through two middlemen. I barely have a bank. Um, and sending an international wire via SWIFT is not only costly, but it's very inefficient. And it's costly on time. He um, basically established the relationship with the end vendor who was accepting Bitcoin and cut his cost of goods by 60%. So his mom makes, I think, $140,000 worth of wigs a year. And his cost of goods sold, or his cost of uh, materials, was reduced by 60% just by using Bitcoin. We have a lot of other instances um, in different businesses that do business primarily with China and India. And uh, I'm free to talk about that uh, after the presentation. But that just kind of 
was uh, the story that Mark wanted me to tell. And then, oh, it's ended. <laughs> uh, here's our contact information, our phone number down here in uh, West Town, and uh, it's kind of my boots on the ground talk. So, nice, Thanks.